Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. This tutorial is going to be talking about analog to digital converters. The notion here is that there are certain pins on our ESP32 device where we can apply an analog input voltage and we can then read the value of that analog input voltage. So uh, Normally we think about digital inputs. The signal is either high or low, it's zero or one. An analog input voltage is a variable voltage in the range zero to some maximum. And here we'll, we'll consider our maximum to be 3.3 .3 volts. So if I have zero volts on my input pin, I'm going to measure a value of zero. And if I've got 3.3 .3 volts on my input pin, I'm going to uh, measure a maximum number. And if I only have half of that, say 1.1 volts, I'm going to measure a number exactly between the two. So what we're going to be measuring here is the analog value of a voltage in an input. Now how could that be useful? Well that could be used for analog inputs such as potentiometers or sliders. It could be used with uh, proportional joysticks. So for example if a, a joystick is usually uh, two potentiometers, one on the XY axis and well, no, one on the north-south axis and one on the east-west axis. And so as we move the joystick around, we would be analog reading from two inputs, one on the north-south, one on the east-west. OK, so here on the screen we have a picture of uh, an ESP32 device. And uh, this is the uh, uh, ESP32 dev kit C from Espressif. And we see that this one has exposed six distinct analog to digital channels. So these pins up here in the blue, those are the potential input channels. Now an ESP32 has, I think it's something like 14 potential analog input channels, but only a sub set of these have been exposed on this device. So we've got channel 0, not 1, not 2, but 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So if we apply an analog input to this, we can read them. So that then, then takes us to the next question in what API do we have available to read these? Well, the ESP IDF, the, integrate, uh, the Internet of Things Development Framework, has uh, uh, an API which begins ADC1 for the analog to digital converter number one. And there are two primary APIs we're concerned with. The first is called config width. Now what this does is this specifies the number of bits of data that will be used to measure the, the input signal. So if we say we are using 12 bits, 12 bits, 2 to the power 12 is 4096. So what we get is a number between 0 and 4096. If we used 11 bits, then we would end up with 0 and 2048, 10 bits, uh, 0 and 1024, or 9 bits, 0 and 512. So the, uh, the, the cost of calculating an analog to digital conversion is a function of how many bits of precision we're interested in. So uh, the, the, the smaller value, the smaller number of bits we can get away with, the quicker and less cost it's going to cost to sample these bits but in this example we're going to go for the full 12-bit resolution so once we call this API which is ADC1 config width with one of these values the next thing we can do is we can call the ADC1 get voltage now that takes as input a channel number remember the channels are the numerics associated here these are channel 0 3 6 7 4 and 5 associated with these physical GPIO pins on the board so channel 0 for example is uh, GPIO pin 30 if we uh, start reading from uh, GPIO pin uh, uh, 36, or we do this get voltage API with channel 0, then we will sample the input voltage on that pin and it will return us an integer value corresponding to the bit width. 
Okay, so it sounds more complicated than it is. Let's have a look at a sample application. And this is it. There's no more to say about it than this. So this is a task, uh, an RTOS task, which gets started. It logs uh, ADC1 here, sets the uh, width to be 12 bits. Uh, we're making a call here to set the attenuation to be nothing, which means we're not scaling it at all. You can ignore that. And now we enter a loop where we get the voltage of channel or the value of channel zero. We log it to the console. We wait a second and then we go round the loop again and again and again. Now, if we look at uh, my console here, we see that I am currently reading a value of 1731. Now, where's that coming in? That means there's a voltage uh, somewhere in the middle. And what I've got connected is a potentiometer. And the potentiometer is uh, at one end, it's got zero volts. At the other end, it's got 3.3 .3 volts. And the analog to digital converter channel zero is, convert is connected right at the center. Now, if we look at my webcam here, I'm going to try and carefully put my uh, screwdriver in here. And as I turn the screwdriver, and hence changing the potentiometer value, we see that as I change the potentiometer resistance, the value goes up. And if I change it in the other direction, the value goes down. So that's a, that's an incredibly simple test, but it's uh, it's certainly illustrates the effect that as I change the potentiometer values on my uh, on my uh, uh, potentiometer there, that has the effect of changing the input value that's being read in the input pin of the analog to digital converter. And really, that's all there is to say about it. It doesn't have to be complicated to be useful. And uh, I hope you found something useful. The key things here are the two APIs that I talked about, uh, setting the configuration width, which is uh, across all the channels, and then reading whichever channel you want. I hope you found this useful, and I look forward to making more videos in the future. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.